Do you like tequila? Do you like the thought of liking tequila? Then this video might blow your mind. Welcome to Con Man Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer, and it's been far too long since I've done a Dirty Little Secrets video. This is where I go on the internet, I talk to people I know, I talk to people in the industry, and just gather all the facts. This is called the Dirty Little Secrets of Tequila. So, what we're gonna do first, before we go through, like, what are the what are the techniques and tricks they use to try and scam you, and what's real and what's fake, let's start with a little baseline, shall we? A tequila is a mezcal. However, mezcal could be multiple species of agave. Tequila is only Blue Weber agave, and it's typically made in Jalisco or a couple other little state regions around uh, Mexico. So that's kind of what defines tequila as we know it. Now, the Blue Weber agave is a special plant because, well, and all the agave are special plants because they take forever to grow. One of the beauties of the Blue Weber agave is it grows pretty quick, relatively. So anywhere between five and 15 years is your typical agave plant. Five to nine years is around the time that you can get a Blue Weber agave plant to maturity. So if you want to know more about agave and different agave species and mezcal, there's a link up there that you could go to. But that's not what you're here for right now, so bookmark that. So if it takes five to nine years to produce an agave plant to maturity, where are you going to make up for cost? In other words, how are you going to maximize your time? so that you could put out an affordable bottle of tequila. So let's start with the first, and, and probably the dirtiest of the little secrets. I'm doing this backwards, like a Tarantino film. Blue Weber agave, to make tequila, is cooked in a brick oven. I believe it's called a horno in, in, in Spanish. What that oven does is it converts the starches inside of the agave plant into sugars that you can then put through the distillation process to create your lovely distillate that produces the alcohol that we enjoy to imbibe. But it takes 72 hours to cook an agave in a brick oven. Obviously, they're cooking multiple. They jam as many as they can in there. But still, that's a long time. That means you're babysitting it, you're waiting, you're jamming them all in there, you're pulling them all out, you're crushing them all up. That is your most traditional way to make tequila. So brands that follow the top of the bar, Fortaleza tequila, Siete Leguas tequila, my favorite in the world. Patron tequila, I hate it, but it's it's made traditionally. Tequila Ocho, Almeca Altos, G4. I don't know a couple of those brands in there, so I'm just kind of like rattling off names. So how do we cut that time down, make it more efficient, more affordable, at least for the tequila companies, keeping the bottom line nice and healthy? There's two ways to do it. The first is called an autoclave. Imagine a large, huge, cylinder tube and inside of it you jam as many of those little agaves as you can you line up like four or five of these huge steel tubes next to each other fill those suckers up high pressure steam can cook the agave much faster than 72 hours it takes roughly 18 hours maybe a little more maybe a little less but a whole lot less than 72. it also changes some of the flavor profiles the taste, the textures, the thickness, the, the entire product will be impacted by using an autoclave versus the traditional cooking styles. Brands that use an autoclave that we know of. Partida, Pura Sangra, I believe Alma, who I've, has sponsored the show in the past, and probably like 80% or more of the stuff that's on the market today. Why is it done that way? Because it gets the starches to sugar state faster. Faster, less people, larger volume at a time, but a lot of brands aren't going to sit there and tell you how untraditional they are because it doesn't really sound good in their marketing material. It cuts down on cost. However, as we're going to see later, that doesn't necessarily mean they pass that cost on to you, which is, a, I think, the third dirty secret. Now, if you know anything about tequila, you know what I'm going to say next. The real dirty business here is what's called the diffuser. This is the third method that gets your starches to sugars faster. Imagine a large vat of hydrochloric acid. You throw all the agave nectar into the hydrochloric acid and you just chemically dissolve all of the stuff so that you get the leftovers, which will be your sugars. It's a whole lot faster. You could do it in mass quantity and you don't even need heat. Many big brands will do this to help cut costs. The other bonus is since you're not using heat and you're not doing that whole roasting process, you could just get immature agave plants don't let them grow to maturity. Cut them early. Throw them into the diffuser. It's, it's not going to come out that great to begin with. So just 
Use whatever you can get your hands on. It doesn't have to be the top quality agave plants. And the beauty is companies will not fess up to doing this. Nobody's going to be like, hey, yeah, yeah, we use a diffuser. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, whatever. It's not traditional, but eh, it doesn't really taste that great, but it doesn't matter. The end result of using a diffuser is you have a product that has very little flavor, almost like a vodka. Kind of has that solvent flavor to it. It's losing a lot of the minerals, the richness, the mints, the, the cooked, baked that just that dark rich agave flavor the stuff you get out of stuff like sete leguas a few brands that are known to have used diffusers include casa dragones pretty much all the salsa brands so on my table that's these two guys here like trace generaciones conmemorativo blue azul 100 años tantio senior frogs heradora oh i have that heradora el Himador, and many more Actually, there's a bunch of links for resources below in this video that you can click on if you want to deep dive into some of the research other people have done, how they've figured out some of this stuff. The um, little trick here is every brand has a nom number. That is the number that represents the distillery they're at. If that distillery has a diffuser on premise and they make products for a bunch of other people that are diffuser products and they don't have an oven, they don't have an autoclave, and you're making your product there, just do the math. Now, there are some distilleries that have autoclaves and diffusers because some brands, when they're having shortages or they just need to cut costs, you can diffuse some and autoclave the rest and mix and match to get the product that you need at the desired price you're looking for. Or the other option is if you're creating a mixed dough tequila, which we'll talk about in a minute, a mixed dough is going to be used with a diffuser because you're not going to use anything in the traditional brand for those specific types of tequila. So if you have a distiller that does mixed doughs and does actual more more or less autoclave traditionals, they're gonna have both of those on premise. Now you don't know necessarily which one they're actually using unless you ask them, like a lot of people have done for the brand Casamigos. Why? Probably because it's like the most expensive product in the market and everybody thinks it's just because George Clooney has something to do with it. And in some cases they'd be right. The product isn't that good. Some of the folks out on Reddit have actually written into the Casamigos brands, talked to them, and they said they do not tell you what their proprietary means are to produce their product, cough, cough, autoclave, but they did say they're not using the diffuser. So I don't think they lie. I, I don't see the reason they lie. They, it, it would be just easier just to avoid the question and not write back, but the chances are really good that they're using an autoclave, which is fine for a brand that costs you 25 to $30. 60, 55. Casamigos, Clase Azul, Avion, Campo Azul, all are known to either use diffusers or have them on premise, leaving that up to you to decide. And the only real way to figure it out is to taste all the brands. Typically, the flavor profile for a product that is done, that is cooked, is definitely gonna have cooked agave flavor to it. You're gonna find some nuances of mint, fruit, probably some herbal qualities to it as well. Diffuser brands are gonna be more like solvent, they're going to have that chemical medicinal type flavor profile. Black pepper, green apple, sugar candies, I kind of think of as cotton candies, are the kind of the flavors you're going to get out of the diffuser. The autoclave meets yourself right in the middle, but a lot less of the candy flavor, a little bit more of the traditional flavor, but not as cooked and roasted and deep. And it's also not unusual for a company to go from, say, a traditional to an autoclave or autoclave to a diffuser. And what ends up happening are people who are diehard fans of the brand start to taste that difference and over time they're like yeah let me just let me just let me just go the second big dirty secret the imposter the mixto the mixto this is stuff like jose cuervo especial move over traditional stuff we're talking about 51 percent agave and probably some sort of grain alcohol so what do they do to make this brand what it is you, you use half as much agave, which means you can double the amount of product you can create and still charge a pretty good number for it, even at 20 bucks. So if you were to diffuse it, then you were to say, fill that in with maybe some cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, maybe the, the core spirit to keep the, the ABV up. You took a bunch of sugar, you put a bunch of yeast in it, you let that poop out alcohol so you have a cane alcohol. You then distill that, you get a nice pure flavorless alcohol that's cheap to make because all you need was sugar to do it. 
you use that to fill in the other 49% or probably 45% because you've got to also account for your caramel colors, your actual sweeteners, your additives to make it taste older. Really, the, the only and the easiest way to detect it is just to read the label. This label will not say 100% agave anywhere. It might say made with agave, made with blue Weber agave, something like that. But as long as it doesn't say 100% de agave. Since I just shot a little bit on Jose Cuero, it's important to know not only do they have their own farms, their own nom, their own whole distillery setup, but they actually have pretty good product. This is probably a diffuser product, but whatever. The Jose uh, Cuero Traditional, it might be autoclave. It's pretty tasty. Um, this is a this is a, a product for a pretty baseline price, a, a bump up from Jose Especial that tastes fine. Number three, the value of your tequila should be based on the quality. So this company spent 70 hours to cook their product. They got less product, lower yields, more mature product that's been out there in the fields for a long period of time. It should naturally be more money. The same thing with Patron. You cannot say, oh, well, Patron should be $20 because Hornitos, not this specific one because this is in Yeho somehow, just because there's a small, cheap brand doesn't mean it should be at the same price. I just don't like the taste, and it still is a little bit too expensive. The next thing, and this pairs well with your diffuser story, is the use of additives. It is entirely legal to label and produce a tequila that has additional stuff in it that isn't just tequila. However, it can only be 1% of that stuff, and since 2013, it cannot be put inside of a Blanco. So pretty much all of your aged products, they can just add stuff to it to make it agier. You can only put 1% in there, so whatever you're using is going to be highly concentrated to begin with. Anything over 1% has to be called a liqueur or a crema. Some things that get added. Simple syrup, because sweeter, people just like sweet, sweet cells. Glycerin. Glycerin is often used to improve the mouthfeel. If your product is a little thin and watery, the glycerin is a thicker, oily type sugary substance. So it's going to give you a little bit of that sweeter flavor. It's going to round it off in your mouth so that potency that you're getting from that blast of solvent alcohol becomes curbed and delicious. And now you'll pay more. Oak extract. There's a good one. Just bring the barrel to the product. Caramel color. That's caramel color happening right there in your business. Fragrances, flavorings, and other stuff. You want to get some nuance of like chamomile? Fine. And of course, diffusers are going to rely heavily on flavor additives because otherwise they just have basically a vodka. So they got to put all the flavors back in to make it taste nuanced and special so that you'll spend $25 or $30 for it. The best thing to do is to do your research ahead of time. If you're just buying a product because you're going to mix 25 margaritas at the pool tomorrow, I say just get your diffuser product. Most of the people aren't going to know anyway. They probably are doing shots of Jose Cuervo off of some stripper's boobs the night before. So who cares? However, it also means that those that do have a flavor nuance for tequila and appreciate a product that isn't crap are probably going to be like, huh, at least you tried. And if it's a free margarita and you're an aficionado, you're probably going to be okay with it. And again, down below, more reference material, some of the stuff that I dug up in my travels while searching to produce the content for this video. If you have more questions, leave them below on the sidebar, my other Dirty Little Secrets videos. Down below, the Awesome Drinks Bartender Starter Kit, because I own awesomedrinks.com. You need barware, syrups, and stuff like that? That's where you want to go. So buy it from me first. That's it. We're teaching you how to drink.